what we'd like to dig into today are specifics about the students. And so we've asked um, if each of you could share a particular story of a student, a case study. And really thinking about a student who has achieved a high level of academic success and interpersonal success, so socio-emotional success. Mm -hmm. And then we were, we're interested in sort of what, what, were the, what was the trajectory, what was the story of getting them or working with them through their development. So you can imagine we're after a more sophisticated, nuanced understanding mm -hmm. of the work that happens at the school, as opposed to just a data set after graduation. Mm -hmm. So today what we're going to talk about is the practices that are taking place mm -hmm. here at the school that get kids ready to be able to engage with high, a high level of interpersonal skills, so they're really good in group dynamics, working on teams, mm -hmm. and they're able to deploy some high level discrete skills like reading, writing, mathematics, computation, mm -hmm. in those, um, in that senior experience. The student came to Amy Beale High School uh, labeled as a, a student that had exceptional skills mm -hmm. in her academics. The student often didn't do the work because she felt that she already knew the information and she didn't have to to show or demonstrate that she knew how to complete the work. For Cynthia, her first big struggle her freshman year was learning how to make friends. Mm -hmm. And I believe that through the support of this school and the relationship driven aspect of the school between teachers, students, and students with other students, she was really able to find comfort in being vulnerable and making new friends and building relationships with teachers. At the same time, uh, her home life was um, a struggle for her. And her freshman year, she, she made it through by the skin of her teeth. Her sophomore year, she was introduced to uh, mock trials. Mm -hmm. And uh, this seemed like an elective that she would not engage in if you mm -hmm. knew her her freshman year. She was very quiet, she was very closed off. Her advisor uh, highly encouraged her <laughs> to try something new. <laughs> and uh, her advisor had struggled, I think, with her a couple of times, um, you know, her freshman year because of, of her apathy. And I believe it was that advisor, advisee relationship, um, you know, kind of pushing a student out of their comfort zone and saying, try this, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a little painful, and if you are still struggling in a year, we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the change point was so far off in the future that she had to engage. Mm -hmm. And it was through mock trials that she began to find her voice. And she began to realize that she had something to say and what she had to say was important. And she was partnered with a fantastic mentor, a local prosecutor here in Albuquerque, who uh, pushed her to uh, think more like an intellectual and look at two sides of a, of a case or a position. And that that intervention changed her entire trajectory the next three years. Her junior year, she did, she continued on this growth trajectory. In her senior year, she actually did her senior project with the local uh, defender's office. And her senior year was probably her strongest year. Uh, she demonstrated her growth and continued to grow throughout her senior year. Socially, she expanded her networks. Um, academically, her writing became became refined, detailed, uh, su supported with evidence and documentation, clearly articulated. Uh, and she used the experience in the public defender's office during her senior year uh, to grow as an individual and understand that she wants to become a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's also That's noteworthy really that she was um, going through significant family issues dur during this whole it's a parallel process of her world outside of school was turned upside down. I think it 
for a long stretch of time. She wasn't living in the home. Yeah. Um, so that's, she was able to negotiate that, I think, because of the relationships here that supported her through mm -hmm. them. I think it was, it's the, the variety of relationships and the different types of supports that some students can find here is, is exactly what students need. So mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, bringing up uh, the, the head teacher of mock trial, mm -hmm. she, that, that, that relationship, she was, the teacher was able to give that student really specific feedback mm -hmm. that was uh, meaningful at, at exactly in her zone of proximal development, mm -hmm. socially and academically. Mm -hmm. And I think when students have an opportunity to get that level of intense interaction from multiple people mm -hmm. with multiple different mm -hmm. perspectives, mm -hmm. honestly, that's what I think makes our school so powerful. Nick and I, we were surprised at how her college search blossomed. Oh yeah. I mean, she All of us began were. senior year uh -huh. really thinking, I'm going to UNM, mm -hmm. and then by October was mm -hmm. starting to explore, you know, attended the fairs, yeah. had a sense of, you know, there's, a, there's lots of different opportunities out there. And I think um, she ended up applying to maybe eight or nine schools it started with one, right? And and just in the the span of a few months, um, and I I had the honor to read a few of her rec letters, one from her mentor, and I mean it was absolutely persuasive. It sounded like there were some developmentally appropriate academic interventions, so pushing at the right time to develop her academic skills. Yeah, I think uh, freshman year, the writing that we do here is uh, it's, it's targeted to help students organize their thoughts on paper. So students who have a tendency to function at a higher academic level, they don't necessarily want, want to engage in that organization okay. of thoughts. They just want to get all of their thoughts out. <laughs> yeah. and, and I think that for a student like Cynthia, she felt like she answered the question whatever the prompt for writing was. She mm -hmm. felt like she had done that. And it's true. In four pages, she elucidated on whatever the, the topic was, mm -hmm. but it wasn't clear. And I think that helping her organize her thoughts and ideas was the first step. And then really the, the, the most important step for her, that external intervention with mock trials helped her realize the importance and value of evidence in her writing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which she hadn't, she may not have been able to get to on her own. So um, the relevant experience outside of school made the discrete academic skill important to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And then Kathleen, you were saying that there was some, the family, the challenges around the family, mm -hmm. and then did how did those get uncovered? How did, how did you know that that was happening outside of school? I think she, she came to, to us to, to look for some guidance around how to negotiate some, um, I think they were pretty concrete sort of custody issues at the time. Um, and then she literally had to figure out where she was going to live. Um, so did she go to her, was it through her advisor or straight to the student support office? I think it was kind of both. I, I had several conversations with her just about, you know, Trying, trying to think through next steps, what, what could be um, a place for her to stay just to get her through the year. Um, I think she probably sought a lot of support from a lot of adults here through all that. Mm -hmm. um, without having really any true parental support along the way. It's almost like she, she found the support she needed through the adults here rather than in, in her immediate family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it wasn't, there wasn't some kind of linear path, advisor, student support, head of school, it was... I think it was more like an electron bouncing around <laughs> and touching, yeah. touching base with a lot of different people, yeah. And I think those people who were trying to support her, making sure that they were communicating with yeah. each other mm -hmm. uh, about what, what her disposition was or what she was going through that particular week, whether... And I think in this case, there were some, some teachers who, who opted to help her out financially a little bit to make sure that she, you know, had food, clothes, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Particularly she, when she, was, she also had a sibling here, and so I think it was a, um, it was a combination of offering her support and also her, her little brother mm -hmm. along the way.
I'd like to present a student who's a, a young Latino male of um, a divorced household living primarily with his mother and little sister who came in um, sort of like disaffected, didn't really care, didn't really, you know, he was, he, I wouldn't want to call him like of a punk attitude, but he was mm -hmm. definitely of a, a young, um, you know, kind of immature kid who thought that school wasn't really that important. Um, he failed not one but two classes his freshman year and barely passed all of his other classes, despite the fact that he's um, intellectually very capable. Mm -hmm. He um, was offered some, some credit recovery um, interventions for his sophomore year, and he started to really see the value of um, just getting on his work. And um, he only got stronger and stronger. He recovered the credits his sophomore year, so he was um, not missing any credits going into junior year. Mm -hmm. um, he formed really strong um, friendships, with some kids who were struggling students and with some kids who were really um, stellar students. And he kind of found his, uh, kind of his path as what we like to call a scholar and a community, mm -hmm. um, a, a civically engaged young man. So much so that by his senior year, he um, participated in a local um, community grassroots organization called Southwest um, Organizing Project, Grow the Future. And he was um, a spokesperson for them. Mm -hmm. He appeared on the radio for them. He would go give talks at schools. And so who, who, a traditionally kind of shy, introverted, not going to show off kind of kid became a real representative for not only Amy Beale, but for this um, project, Grow the Future. His academic skills just continued to improve. Mm -hmm. um, his engagement with his academics uh, really blossomed, mm -hmm. I think, for lack of a better term. And he wrote one of the best research projects oh, I he think did, by far. we've ever mm -hmm. had out. Mm -hmm. And so much so that when he read excerpts of it at a local um, uh, sort of organized mm -hmm. event for our congresswoman, she requested to have his research paper be put into the congressional record because of its significance. On, and, um, and in class, I th in our senior language arts, arts class, he became such a model for doing that type of research where he, um, I mean, it was a five-month process, mm -hmm. and he really led the class, and not in an obvious way, but I think in a really... Um, you know, just he's a, he's such a natural leader, right. but he would participate and uh, you know talk about his conversations that he has with his mentor. Mm -hmm. um, his mentor really helped him think about what a food desert is and kind of sparked that mm -hmm. idea. And then he was so open mm -hmm. to you know he he read two books. He also looked at numerous journal articles, but he went so above and beyond and just did it in his consistent, steady way and you know he he really demonstrated kind of a growing um like curiosity and intellectual mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um sort of rigor in his work and it was uh, it was i think as a result of sort of locating a passion um it was a result of connecting to adult m mentors both in the school and outside of the school with our community partners mm -hmm. and it was his consistent um real participation as a as a, a, a community engaged young man that like opened up possibilities for him that probably would have never been there before mm -hmm. particularly in a traditional educational environment mm -hmm. and so by the end of his 10th grade year he'd recovered his credits he was you know getting much better grades and demonstrating um, sort of what it looked like to be, a, as I say, a civically engaged young man and a scholar all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you have any insight into how he negotiated or negotiated that choice of friends who you said mm -hmm. some were very high academically performing and some were not mm -hmm. high academically mm -hmm. performing, how he navigated that mm -hmm. choice. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, love is a funny thing. <laughs> but he, he um, actually... He had a girlfriend pretty early on who was probably our most highest achieving mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. a student. Mm -hmm. And she was very rigorous and very um, dedicated and 
sort of demonstrated her own good skills. And was our salutatorian. She was. Mm -hmm. Right. had been the first in the class for, yeah, for the forever. majority of right. four years. I mean, mm -hmm. she became a Rosemont scholar. I mean, mm -hmm. she's mm -hmm. like an incredible. And, and yet he also had good friends who struggled mightily mm -hmm. with horrific habits mm -hmm. that he really actually more than anything, I think, brought them along Definitely. as opposed to them bringing him mm -hmm. down. Despite the fact that he's not this kind of gregarious, super outgoing guy, he's a quiet, Dependable. steady presence mm -hmm. who showed up that way. And I, I think you were at his final review or not. I don't know if you remember. Maybe you weren't. Anyway, it was the, I have oh, never beautiful. seen young men emote, emote. <laughs> with so much um, enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Like how much they demonstrated, they, how much they openly said they loved one another, that mm -hmm. they were the brothers they never had. Yes, that was a very common that, I mean, it, theme at his It was incredible, yeah. the strength of their connection mm -hmm. after having gone through four years together and, you know, some dragging and some getting pulled and some mm -hmm. pulling, you know, and how important their relationships were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe in any other setting socially, that wouldn't have been as acceptable or as um, kind of see highly esteemed. I think here, the both the being emotive with your 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 male buddies is is hugely socially supported. Mm -hmm. Being scholarly is hugely socially supported, and um, he was able to find that instead of getting, kind of getting stuck in a rut that he could have been stuck in a, in another environment. So I'd like to tell the story um, of a young woman who I'll call Holly, who um, there's aspects of her story that I think a lot of other uh, students have experienced. And I am, as I talk about her, I'm thinking of you know five to 10 other students who have um, similar aspects of challenges and struggles in their worlds. And she was very bright, very articulate, very funny. I think she had pink hair at one time, <laughs> and green and purple hair after that. And she came from a pretty privileged upper middle class white family. Um, a family of high achievers, high expectations of her. She um, was very involved with her family. It was just kind of this beautiful person. Um, and she really had some, some demons that she had to confront that really came out her senior year when I worked most closely with her. Um, it turned out she'd actually fabricated a, um, a transcript mm -hmm. which had a grade um, for a class that she hadn't taken. And so there was a little bit of a crisis uh, mid-May where we realized that she actually needed to take another class. Um, when we asked her to come to the school to meet with us to kind of confront her about this issue, she showed up under the influence. And I remember clear as, clear as yesterday that she, um, she knocked on the front door of the school um, and I opened the door to let her in. Her mom was already present. And I was overwhelmed with the smell of tequila or some kind of alcohol. She, you know, obviously had driven there. She would showed up drunk. I had to ask her for her keys. I think we ended up calling the crisis intervention team. Um, and obviously, you know, she, her substance abuse issues were, were, um, were just overflowing at that point. Needless to say, the meeting didn't go well. I don't think we had the meeting. We, we realized that she wasn't going to be a student who would graduate on time. Um, so we had, to, we had to intervene really quickly and get her some pretty serious help. Um, she did end up graduating. She was able to take another class. I think she graduated a few weeks later in the summer. Um, and I think the, the thing that really stands out to me is that all along in this, this whole kind of messy process, she was really honest with me about her struggles. She was honest with me about how much um, she had been using. She was honest with me about the shame she felt around this, especially, um, you know, in the face of her family. Um, but I think before we kind of move on to where, she, how she came to be where she is now, Nikki, if you want to speak with speak to her about just about her academic abilities and kind of what you saw in the classroom. I remember really vividly how much she enjoyed creative writing, and so we would do really extended. Um, free writing. I mean, I remember her giving even kind of the meekest, shyest person in our class a lot of kudos and props. And mm -hmm. it was just, I mean, she was a really good, when she was on, she was a wonderful, I think, community member. Yeah, and I think the, mm -hmm. the thing that we've found with kind of the chronic substance abusers that come through our doors, and there's, there's 
you know, they, they do come through our doors, mm -hmm. is that we, we negotiate those challenges and struggles not with shame and, um, you know, mm -hmm. guilting them, but really looking at how, what they're, wh how the choices that they're making are getting in the way of their, their life goals. But the, the thing that was really pretty amazing to witness was to, didn't happen for two years. Um, two years later, I got a call from her, and she invited me to she invited me and our former dean to come to her AA meeting, where she actually told her story. Oh, and I think um, the, the the chance of telling your story at, in an AA context is a pretty pivotal moment in your sobriety. She talked in this meeting not about sort of. Um, Maybe what had had gotten to, gotten her to where she was two years later, but the things that um, she tried to carry with her and, and continue on, and she really talked about the importance of relationships mm. and how um, the people in her life, myself, the other dean, her um, her peers that were there, her mother that, that was present, um, they negotiated the difficult moments in the in the relationships with her um, without giving up on her, and I think. Um, that aspect of the work that we do in-house is really important and pretty magical. And I think mm -hmm. she was wearing this as a badge of, of honor that she had gone for two years without having um, had anything to drink and that she was able to come back um, to these relationships she had in high school. And not only were they still present, but they were flourishing and that they, you know, hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll stay in touch with this student. After attending that meeting, um, we exchanged phone numbers and I would get a text occasionally, hey, I just got into a welding class at CNM and I'm planning on going to UNM next year. Could, it, could you be a reference? I would kind of get updates about what she was doing after that because I think she wanted, um, wanted us in her life to know um, that she was succeeding despite the, the huge challenges she had on her plate when she was with us. So, yeah, pretty amazing, very strong young woman. So, um, at at points um, with students when they run up against the the what's permissible mm -hmm. in school and sometimes it's a trade-off right of how much more are we going to go with the student so boundaries we, versus support yeah. Yeah. yeah and so can you can you speak a little bit about um, how you think about that Kathleen mm -hmm. sure I mean I, again it goes back to the relationship piece and just with uh, the example of this kid fabricated a transcript from a, an Institute of higher learning like in any in any other um, context that probably would be a, a firm boundary of sorry we're done go get yeah. your GED you know you figure this out it's not um, something we need to figure out with you but I think we were all able to um, negotiate this horrible event with, you know, thinking in the long run what is going to be best for this kid and how can we support her in um, not giving up and um, potentially having a life where she, you know, doesn't find success because she had this hurdle in front of her and she was never supported along the way to, to overcome it. And so we worked with her to, to figure out, um, you know, I, I don't feel like we're pushovers in the process. We were very firm that um, she was not going to graduate with her class, that she needed to have um, the same number of credits as any other kid, and we'd give her a few weeks and she would have a, a lovely little graduation ceremony separately. Um, so I think it was both, a, a firm boundary and this is, we're not going to let this ruin your life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that's how we, we were able to, to be the, both the, the good parent and the bad parent in that situation. Mm -hmm. I remember that moment and I remember not sharing that point of view with you, Kathleen, <laughs> but I remember doing what Kathleen wanted mm -hmm. as opposed to what I thought was the appropriate thing. Mm -hmm. So I was much more about the... You're the bad parents. Yeah, I was much <laughs> more about the discipline, but I remember sure. the yeah. conversation with Kathleen about like, we need, this is, that's not serving her mm -hmm. to throw her out of school for the transcript. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we, nego her and I negotiated that um, together and and John I remember yeah mm -hmm. that we all negotiated that and kind of did what was not in the school's interest but in the kids interest thanks you guys for doing this today it's I'm amazed at the sophistication of the practice it's really and I think it's hard to name it but I think you guys did a really good job of naming the practices that go on here to support kids, so thank mm -hmm. you.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an, a fun process to take part in. Thanks for letting us have this conversation. Mm -hmm. It's nice to reflection. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>